of the leader that they are dealing with. They accept the fact that he is the leader and we have to deal with him. Good, bad, friendly, unfriendly. And frankly, I want to tell you this, if you don't mind, very directly. If you did a poll of 193 leaders and asked them in 2017, 2018, would you rather deal with President Xi Jinping or would you rather deal with President Donald Trump? i tell you, 193 countries will vote in favor of Xi Jinping. I'm serious. When you emphasize that, oh, it's a leader that's a problem, it's not the problem. You have to deal with a country. And I can tell you this, since I've spoken to many people, especially in third world countries, who have dealt with President Xi, they don't share your vision of President Xi. They see him as a sane, sober, rational, predictable leader who is advancing China's interests quite effectively. At the end of the day, you look at where China was when he took power, 2014, where China is 2024, it has come a long way. We, whatever we do, we don't underestimate him or China. By the way, we also don't underestimate United States. I want to assure you that the respect for United States is deep and profound and very strong. But in the same way, there's also the same deep, profound respect for China. And we know we have to deal with these two great powers. And actually, we believe that the United States will be better off. Now, don't call it engagement. Don't call it containment. Just deal with the reality. The reality is that there is a strong great power like China and you have to live with it and then figure out what's the best way of living with it in a way that enhances America's national interest. And I would say for America to defend its national interest is perfectly legitimate. But in many ways, the world would be happier that if given the, all the, extra, the extraordinary challenges you're facing, for example, in climate change, you know, you're the expert on climate change, the, the most sensible thing humanity could do is to tell the United States and China, please, we have a bigger problem coming. If we burn up planet Earth, we have nothing left to live on. We're destroying the only ship we have. Why don't we press the pause button on this geopolitical contest? Frankly, it's less important than the global challenges we face. So if you ask me what the rest of the world thinks, they actually hope that the United States and China could find ways and means of dealing with their differences in such a way that it doesn't destabilize the rest of the world and allows us to focus on what's really important that's coming in the future. In a certain sense, if I read this correctly, I think Xi Jinping has brought engagement to an end, sadly and tragically, both for us for you and for China. And I ask you why? How do you explain it? And that changes the game completely. What are you going to do about it? What am I going to do about it? What are we going to do about it? What's the right response now that we don't have an operating system for a, any kind of a, 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 as Hamid said, we're compasses. What's the answer? You tell me. Now, if you want me to answer your question directly, uh, Orville, about uh, President Xi Jinping, I want you to know that, again, I want to go back to my point of 193 countries in the world. Almost no other country in the world passes judgment on the quality of the leader that they are dealing with. They accept the fact that he is the leader and we have to deal with him. Good bad, friendly, unfriendly, and frankly, I want to tell you this, if you don't mind, very directly. If you did a poll of 193 leaders and asked them in 2017, 2018, would you rather deal with President Xi Jinping or would you rather deal with President Donald Trump? i tell you, 193 countries will vote in favor of Xi Jinping. I'm serious. When you 
emphasize